na po natin ang ating mga tithes and offerings. And sabi po sa 2 Corinthians 9, 7-8, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. You know, our worship, our, 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 our tithes and offerings is our worship no, sa ating pong Panginoon. It's by trusting Him, giving to Him that we may receive. Sabi nga po, it's an act of our trust in God. It's an act of our faith in God that by giving our tithes and offerings, we are ready to receive all of these things that God has for us. At ano po yung matatanggap po natin dyan? Sabi po, God is able to make all grace. All grace abound to you. And you will have all sufficiency in all things at all times. Hindi ka nagkukulang anumang panahon ng iyong buhay. And you will have all the things that you need. You will be abounding in every good work. And this is the promise of God into our lives. So let us be thankful. Let us praise Him with our tithes and offerings. And we may give our tithes and offerings in the following accounts. So 0977 So let us pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness po sa aming buhay. Salamat, Panginoon, that even in the midst of these challenging times, you are there to provide for us. You are there to take care of all of our needs. And Lord, we declare that lahat po ng aming mga pangangailangan, Panginoon, ikaw ang aming mabuting ama na patuloy na nagbibigay, patuloy na nagsusupply all the glorious riches in heaven through Christ, O Lord God. Thank you, Lord God for your abundance sa amin pong buhay. We declare that in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody say, Amen and Amen. Alright, so ngayon dako naman po tayo sa salita ng Panginoon. At uh, syempre, magbabahagi din po niyan is uh, ako rin na nakatoka ngayon. Ano? <laughs> so uh, ako yung lagi yung nakikita ngayon. But nonetheless, no, we also pray sa lahat ng ating mga leaders and pastors We pray for, of course, yung restoration, healing, especially sa ating po mga kapatid that have been undergoing or going through yung uh, uh, sickness. No? So we declare no, yung uh, kabutihan ng Panginoon over your life. And at this time, uh, one of the things na dapat po natin gawin is pakinggan ang salita ng ating Panginoon sapagkat ang salita ng Panginoon ay nagbibigay ng kagalingan ng kasaganaan sa ating pong buhay. So today, we're going to share with you a message coming from the Lord. And the title of our message for today is Rise Up. No? Bumangon ka. Sabi nga, <laughs> umahon ka. You were made to thrive in life. Alright, so by the way, hindi ko pala nadala yung aking book. No? I was actually reading itong uh, napakagandang libro. No? Particularly yung, uh, um, anong tawag doon? Um, yung may mountains. <laughs> Give me this mountain. Ayan. <laughs> Napakagandang libro po nun. And uh, you know, I'm really, really blessed, especially during these times. Sabi nga po, Give me this mountain by Joseph Prince. No? So it's actually a book that talks about our faith, that talks about how we can rise up, no? even in these challenging times. Kaya nga po na-inspire ako na yan po ang ating ibahagi na mensahe. At ang sabi po dyan, no? uh, you were made to thrive, rise up. So ito po yung book na aking binabasa ngayon, no? Give Me This Mountain. I would encourage you to read this kasi napakaganda po. No? It allows us to have faith. It allows us to rise up even in the times that you are troubled, even in the times na feeling mo napapanghinaan ka na ng loob. No? So it also talks about the life of Caleb. But at this time, this will just, this will just be a simple message that I would like to share with you And I believe that this is what is God leading me you know, to share with you today. So let us pray and ask the wisdom of God. Uh, thank you, Lord, for this time that uh, once again we will come to hear your word. Salamat, Panginoon, for your word gives us life. Salamat, Panginoon, that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light into our path. And your word, Lord God, gives us hope, especially po sa panahon ngayon, Panginoon, we thank you na naandyan po ang iyong salita to encourage us and to remind us that you are a great God and you have wonderful plans sa amin pong buhay. So Lord, open our minds and open our hearts. Fill us with your spirit, O Lord God. 
so that we may be able to learn all the things that you want us to hear for today. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay? So wait lang ha. Lalagay ko lang ito sa stuck ang aking screen. Dali. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway, let's proceed. No? So, ang pag-uusapan po natin is you were made to thrive. No? Rise up, bumangon ka. You know, it's been more than a year. No? Mahigit isang taon na po ang lumipas. Actually, parang anniversary na nga po natin ngayon. Ano? <laughs> That uh, the pandemic has started. And habang ngayon, nandun pa rin po tayo sa pandemic and it seems like napakatagal na po ng panahon at uh, patuloy pa rin pong dumadami yung mga kaso ng nagkakasakit. No? And uh, looking back when it started, I remember very clearly no, nung isang taon, nung announced po yung lockdown, yung pandemic na yan, I remember na nagkaroon po ako ng pagkatakot. No? Siyempre, hindi natin alam kung anong pwedeng mangyari sa kinabukasan. And you know, being a Christian does not mean na hindi po natin pagdadaanan itong mga bagay na ito. Bilang mga Kristiyano, since we still live in the fallen world, from time to time, dumadating pa rin po yan. Yung pangamba, yung pagkatakot, yung pagkakabagabag, no? yung pag-aalala sa ating buhay. And I myself have experienced that. You know, there were times that you know, na, halos hindi ka makatulog. Di ba? <laughs> Iniisip mo, ano kayang mangyayari sa mga susunod na araw, sa mga susunod na buwan? Ano kayang mangyayari? Mawawalan ba ako ng trabaho? How would I provide for my family? Kung sakaling mawalan ako ng trabaho, I will be able to pay. No? Paano ako makapag, makakapagbayad kay Judith? Di ba? Si Judith yung ating mga bills, Judith na ating binabayaran. Paano kayong mangyayari? No? So the thought of my children suffering pagka hindi ko na kaya mag-provide. So all of these things, eh, napupuno po sa aking isipan. Kaya minsan may mga pagkakataon kapag na-overwhelm ka ng mga bagay na to. Minsan napapatunga nga ka na lang. Minsan napapatingin ka na lang sa kawalan. Di ba? <laughs> Iniisip mo, ano kayang mangyayari? And you know, it, it's not a, a pleasant, no? hindi po pleasant yung ganyang experience dahil sometimes when you find yourself wondering and thinking deep thoughts, it drains your energy, it drains your life. So parang hindi na gumaganda yung pakilasa mo, nai-stress ka, and uh, pag hindi mo iningatan yan, nako, maaring magkasakit ka pa, di ba? And I think at some point in our life, no, na experience po natin lahat yan. That feeling of helplessness, that feeling, that, that feeling of hopelessness. And you know, ano man ang nangyayari po sa ating buhay, I believe this is the word of God wants to say to us, no, particularly sa Psalms 34:18. Sabi po sa Psalms 34:18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted; He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. And you know, I come upon to to look at this no, during the times of despair. Nanabasa ko po ito. And I believe I posted this sa aking uh, Facebook. No? Kaya po masyado kong na-inspire po dito. Sabi nga po ng Panginoon, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Malapit siya sa mga tao na nakakaranas ng hinagpis sa kanilang buhay. He, re he rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Okay? So for me, this is a picture no, ng isang ama na pagka nakikitang nalulungkot, pagka nakikitang uh, discouraged or depressed ang kanyang anak, eh talagang nilalapitan niya yan. Hinahawakan niya yan. Di ba? Hinahag niya yan. <laughs> Niyayapos niya yan dahil gusto niyang ipamalas yung kanyang pagmamahal doon sa kanyang anak. At ang maganda pa po dyan, a picture of a father who wants to help you who wants to encourage you, who wants to lift you up, especially in times that you are discouraged, especially in times that you are down. Kaya nga sabi sa kanyang salita, He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Okay? So I hope that you remember that. No? Habang ikaw ay may pinagdadaanan sa iyong buhay, ang ating Ama, ang ating Panginoon ay napakalapit sa iyo. Naandyan siya sa tabi mo. Hindi ka niya iniiwanan mag-isa. Okay? So, And for me, this is true. No, it is also during those times when I was feeling hopeless that I felt the need more, more, no, more, more of the need for God to work in my life. And I tell you, when God is working on your side, He will give you the strength to carry on, and He will give you the faith to keep your hopes alive. 
So don't lose hope. Know that God is right there beside you. He's not just with you. He's right there beside you. And that is what he's been doing in my life, especially the past year. And that is the reason why you can keep on moving on. That is the reason why you can keep your hopes alive. Because you know that God is always on your side. So I would encourage you today, no matter what life throws at you, ano man ang binabato po sa atin ng mundo, if you feel down and out, if you feel hopeless, if you feel there's no way to go, always remember that God is there making a way for us. And you know, I love that song. No? I don't know if uh, you still remember. Medyo matagal na rin po yung kanta na yan. But I think it has been played. It is being still played right now. No? Yung God will make a way. And I just want to, uh, I, I just want, napapakinggan nyo po yung kanta na yan. No? Sabi niya, God will make a way. When there seems to be no way, He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side. With love and strength for each new day, He will make a way. He will make a way. Alam niyo po, this song is very close to my heart. Because even when I was younger, nung ako po ay bata-bata pa, when I was going through a lot of things, whenever I sing this song, I feel the comfort and the peace that God is always with me. Dumating din po sa aking buhay na hindi ko na alam ko anong gagawin ko. I cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel. But every time I am reminded of this song, every time I sing this song, nararamdaman ko po na ang presensya ng Panginoon ang siyang nagtumutulong po sa atin para nang sa ganun tayo po ay hindi mawalan ng pag-asa. And you know, I love the lyrics of this song. He will make a way when there seems to be no way. And for me, that is true in my life. Sometimes wala na akong uh, solusyon na makita sa, 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 sa sitwasyon ko. And yet God is always providing a way. And from that moment on up until now, that song has been close to my heart. And I hope, no, I hope that when you feel uh, depressed, when you are feel discouraged, you also take a hold of this song. Because this is what exactly is God is doing in your life. Yan po ang ginagawa ng Panginoon sa ating buhay. He makes a way when there seems to be no way. He will guide you. He hold you close and give you all the love and the strength that you need. So nakakatuwa po that whenever I sing this song, I feel His comfort, I'm reminded of His presence, and I receive His peace filling up my life. You know, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Is your spirit crushed right now? Then come to the Lord, and He will rescue you from all your fears, from all your discouragement, And this verse actually no, came from David Psalms. Ito pong Psalms uh, 34. No, makikita po natin dyan. This, this verse comes from Psalm 34, 18. And you know, Psalm 34 is one of David's most powerful Psalms. It was written by him in the cave of Adulam. And I know that I have shared this before. No, but I just want us to, remind, to be reminded that you know, this, this Psalms is one of the most powerful Psalms that was written by David dun sa cave ng Adulam. And I find it really interesting because David wrote this. Sinulat po ni David ito in one of the most challenging seasons in his life. It was actually one of the lowest points in David's life. When he was in that cave in Adulam, all alone, depressed and discouraged. So makikita po natin yan sa 1 Samuel 21.13. You know, the background of this story is that uh, uh, David was running away from Saul. And Saul was hunting him. Tinutugis po siya ni Saul sapagkat si Saul na isang patayin. He he want uh, David to be killed, no? Imaginein mo yung sitwasyon na yon. Ikaw, tumatakas ka kasi alam mo yung Saul and his army is trying to kill you. So, while he was running away from Saul, nakadaan po siya sa isang lugar doon sa dating pinag uh, 
yung station nila Goliath no <laughs> nung uh, buhay pa si Goliath and uh, he came upon uh, the king of Gath yan po yung king ni Goliath at nung nandoon na po siya tinutugis na nga siya natatakot siya sa pwedeng mangyari sa kanyang buhay tapos na encounter pa niya yung king of Gath eh, yung king of Gath syempre gusto nilang i-avenge yung pagkamatay ni Goliath And then, para hindi siya makilala, ito po yung kanyang ginawa. He pretended to be insane, scratching on doors and drooling down his beard. You know the embarrassment? Isa kang mighty warrior. Tapos pagdating mo dun sa lugar na yon, para kang nagpretend na para kang loko-loko. Kumakamot ka dun sa gilid ng mga dingding. And then pinapatulo mo yung laway sa beard mo. How low can you become? No? <laughs> so, it was such an embarrassing moment no, sa buhay po ni David. And ang maganda pa po dyan is after that, no? um, nung nakaalis na po siya, so sabi nga nung King of God, sabi niya hindi pwedeng si David yan kasi si David matipuno, si David mighty warrior yan, hindi pwedeng magmukhang loko-loko yan. <laughs> so naka-escape sa doon and then after that, he escaped and he found himself alone hiding in a cave. No, na, nagtago po siya sa isang cave and you, you can see here how the mighty have fallen. So, I just want you to imagine how David felt at that moment. Ano yung napakiramdam ni David? No, it was very depressing. It was dark on that cave. He was all alone. He is fearing for his life. All the things in his life were falling apart. It seems like there's no hope. It seems like walang liwanag sa dulo ng tunnel. No? And I don't know about you, but... In some points in my life, I have experienced these things. Na parang lahat ng hindi magagandang bagay, eh parang nangyari na sa'yo. <laughs> so imagine the situation of David while he was hiding in that cave. It was dark. It was, he was all alone. And probably, gutom na rin siya. Di ba? <laughs> And after that, ito pa yung masaklap. No? A group of men joined him in that cave. At sino ba yung mga nag-join sa kanya? So makikita po natin yan sa 1 Samuel. Sabi niyan, David left Gat and escaped to the cave of Adulam. And when his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down, down to him there. And all those, ito po yung mga sumama kay David, no? all those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered around him. And he became their commander. About 400 men were with him. So again, if you can imagine the picture, he was depressed, he was discouraged, he was embarrassed, he was ashamed, he was in the dark. Tapos dumating pa yung mga tao, <laughs> nung nalamang na andun siya, sino itong mga to? Distressed, in debt, they're discontented. We call this the 3D army. And there were 400 of them. So nakakalungkot. No? <laughs> Malungkot ka na nga, sinamahan ka pa ng mga taong malulungkotin. And you know what? This is what faith does no, sa atin pong buhay. When we know the Lord, kapag kilala po natin ang ating Panginoon, ito po yung maganda sa nangyari po kay David. Nangyari po sa kanya is of course, he was feeling depressed, he was feeling distressed, pero ang maganda po sa ginawa ni David, no, instead of indulging in self-pity, instead of being condemned, no, being depressed, ang ginawa po niya is he chose not to defeat, not to be defeated by his circumstances. Hindi siya nagpatalo doon sa, sa, sa sitwasyon niya. Rather, he chose to bless the Lord and let the praises of the Lord be continually on his mouth. And I tell you, I encourage you right now, if you are feeling the same thing, if you are discouraged, if you are left in the dark, be like David. Choose to bless the Lord. And that's the reason why in Psalms 34, ito po yung kanyang ginawa. Nung dumating yung 400 na discontented, in debt, distressed, at tiningnan niya po dito is hindi lang tungkol sa sarili niya, tiningnan niya kung ano yung pwede niyang ma- maitulong dito sa mga tao na to. And sumangguni siya sa Panginoon at ang sabi niya sa Psalms 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. And what a wonderful message no? galing po sa kanyang sounds. No? Magnify the Lord in the midst of all the things that you're happening right now. Saan tabi niyo po muna yan? And instead, magnify the Lord. Magnify God. Magnify what Jesus did for you. Magnify the finished work that He has done for you. 
and let us exalt his name together. And that's what David did. He sought the Lord. He magnified the Lord. And the word of God says here, he heard David and he delivered him from all his fears. What are you fearful right now? Ano po yung kinakatakot po natin ngayon? Okay? So, I encouraging you, magnify the Lord. And you know, God in his faithfulness did not just deliver David from all his fears, but he also transformed all the men who were gathered in the cave with him. So, hindi lang si David ang na-transform, pati po yung kanyang mga kasamahan. They went from being distressed from being in debt and discontented to becoming fearless warriors, giant slayer, slayers in their own right. And faithful, mighty men who serve God and David all the days of their lives. So I would encourage you, you read it, no? Sa 2 Samuel 22 to 23, how David's life was transformed from a distressed, discouraged, discontented no? <laughs> to a victorious warrior once again. And this is the same message para po sa ating lahat. Whenever we magnify God, whenever we seek God, He will deliver you from all of your fears. God can turn things around for you. He will make a way when there seems to be no way. So today, do you believe that God loves you and is faithful to deliver you? Well, it doesn't matter kung ano pa yung nararamdaman po natin, whether you are feeling fearful, whether you are feeling distressed, in debt, or discontented right now. Believe right. Maniwala po tayo. Manampalataya po tayo sa ating Panginoon. Believe that when you seek the Lord in worship as David did, the Lord will indeed hear you. Mapapakinggan ka ng Panginoon and He will deliver you from all your troubles. I declare that in the mighty name of Jesus. Ililigtas ka niya sa anumang sitwasyon na naanjan ka ngayon sa buhay mo. He will deliver you from all your troubles, from all your fears, and He will transform you. You know, with all these things that are happening in the world right now, this is the time to look to God. This is the time to seek God. Ito po yung panahon that we should spend more time in God's Word. Because nakita na po natin how David was transformed by magnifying God in his life. You know, ang worship po, ang pasasalamat, ang thanksgiving is one of the easiest yet most powerful ways of being free from self-occupation. Because sometimes kapag po tinitingnan natin lahat ng hindi magagandang nangyayari sa ating buhay, eh, yun po yung ating na pagtutuunan ng pansin, <laughs> yung ating sarili. No? So look away from the painful symptoms that you are feeling right now or the fearful circumstances that are bothering you and worship Jesus. Be occupied with Him and everything will work together for your good. So again, let me read that to you. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. The righteous person, the righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. For the Lord protects the bones of the righteous, not one of them is broken. Calamity will surely destroy the wicked and those who hate the righteous will be punished. But the Lord will redeem those who serve Him. No one who takes refuge in Him will be condemned. And this is God's word for you today. And I hope that as we go through ito pong panahon natin ngayon, this ECQ, this lockdown, this all these things, no? ito po ang ating maging panghawakan sa ating buhay no that the lord will redeem you okay the lord will redeem you and you will not be condemned so this is my message for you today and just to close here no you were made to thrive in life so bumangon po tayo ano man yung ating kinasasadlakan ngayon katulad ni david he went out of that bumangon siya and know this you were made to thrive in life and did you know that as a child of god this statement is irrevocably true ano man ang nangyayari sa paligid mo, hindi po nagbabago yan. You were made to thrive in life. It's true on the days when the doors to pursue your dreams get shut in your face and you're left high and dry. Totoo po yan. Miski sa tingin mo, hindi na mangyayari yung mga bagay na inaasam-asam mo sa buhay mo. 
kapag katingin mo na parang walang nangyayaring pagbabago sa buhay mo, totoo pa rin po yan. You were made to thrive in life. It's true on the days you're hit with anxiety so bad that you don't know how you are going to make it through the day. Hindi po nababago yung katotohanan that you were made to thrive in life. It's true on the days you feel like a complete failure who just can't get your life together. Sometimes you feel na parang, yun nga, walang nangyayari sa buhay mo, feeling mo failure ka, hindi po totoo yan. Ang totoo po is you were made to thrive in life. On days like this, when it feels like you're barely surviving, the idea of thriving seems to be very far off and might be just a wishful thinking. It's especially on these days that God wants you to know He made you to thrive, not just survive, even on the roughest terrains of your life. And God wants you to know that while you might be faced with overwhelming challenges in an atmosphere of anxiety and skepticism, that's exactly where faith lives. Even in the midst, no, sa nangyayari po sa atin, yung marami tayong inaalala sa ating buhay, yung paligid mo kung ano-ano negatibo sinasabi sa iyo, na pataas na pataas na naman ang COVID, na malalockdown na naman, maraming mawawala ng trabaho, maraming maghihirap sa panahon ngayon. You know what? Panghawakan mo po is hindi yung mga bagay na yan. Panghawakan mo is yung pangako ng Panginoon sa iyong buhay. You were made to thrive in life. And this is what faith does no, into our life. Our faith, sabi nga po sa salita, ano, <laughs> sa book na ito, our faith will allow us to go from barely surviving to actually thriving. Okay, so faith confronts fear, faith confronts hopelessness, faith confronts unbelief. So faith will take you to barely surviving to actually thriving. And this is the same with what happened no, sa buhay po ni Joshua. He kept on believing that God is always on his side. No matter what, si Joshua po believe that God is faithful in fulfilling his promises. But I tell you, hindi po madali yan para kay Joshua. For seven years, he led the Israelites to many battles. Marami po siyang mga pinagdaanan. No? And I would assure you that there are times na within those seven years, sa loob ng pitong taon na yon, Joshua also become discouraged. Merong mga pagkakataon na naranasan niya rin yung mga dark moments katulad ng nararanasan mo sa buhay mo. May mga pagkakataon na si Joshua gusto na rin niyang sumuko. Okay? <laughs> But the good thing about Joshua is he never gave up. Hindi siya sumuko. Even at an old age, he kept on believing. At yun po yung nangyari, no? he was able to enter the promised land. Because he kept on believing that God is faithful in fulfilling His promises. Now, ano po yung sikreto ba ni Joshua? Paano siya na natili no, na sa pananampalataya niya sa Panginoon? Paano siya na natili na in the midst of all this discouragement na nararanasan niya, eh na natili siyang uh, hoping na mangyayari ang mga bagay na pinangako ng Panginoon sa kanya? And I believe sa book pa lang ng Joshua 1, ito na po kaagad yung sinabi, no? Sabi ni Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. And I believe, ito po yung pinakamalaking bagay na ginagawa ni Joshua, kaya po siya ay nagtagumpay sa kanyang buhay. It's by meditating on God's word day and night sapagkat ang pangako ng Panginoon for then you will make your way prosperous and it will give you good success. Meditate means not only to think about God but also to declare, to mutter, to utter the promises of God in your life. Yan nga yung po yung lagi natin sinasabi sa ating message. No? Kung anumang sitwasyon mo ngayon sa buhay mo at ang gagawin mo po dyan is humanap ka kung anong pangako ng Panginoon sa inyo, ibangga mo yan doon sa sitwasyon, doon sa kasinungalingan na binibigay sa iyo ng kalaban mo, ng kaaway natin. Meditate, to mutter, to utter, to declare God's promises over your life. Because when we do that, okay, hindi ko po ginagawa lang ito, ha? galing po ito sa salita ng Panginoon. When we meditate, it will make you prosperous and then you will have good success. You were made to thrive in life. And even in 1 Timothy 4.15, meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them so that your progress may be evident to all. Okay? So again, kapareho ng sinabi ni Joshua 1.8 said also in 1 Timothy, when we meditate on these things, the word of God, the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God, give yourself entirely to them so that your progress may be evident to all. So again, meditate brings prosperity, brings good success, but at the same time, 
it brings progress and it is evident to all nakikita ng mga tao that uh, and it gives glory to God na no? nakikita ng tao yung pagbabago transformation na nangyayari sa buhay mo and it gives glory to God okay so i would encourage you when in fear meditate on the word of God no sabi nga po sa 2 Timothy 1:7 for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind kapag po kayo ay natatakot declare this over your life this is God's truth no sabi po God has not given you a spirit of fear but he has given you power love and a sound mind declare that over your life when you are struggling with your health kung meron ka pong karamdaman ngayon na feeling mo nakikinig ba ang Panginoon sa akin remember this praise the Lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases who redeems you your who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion meditate on this declare this over your life say amen forgive all your sins and heal all your diseases and when problems overwhelm you know this philippians 4:13 i can do all things through christ who strengthens me in romans 8:28 and we know that all things work together for good to those who love god to those who are called according to, her, to his purpose meditate on the word of god and he will give you good success he will prosper you he will make you progressive and at the same time it will be evident to all and meditation keeps you in his perfect peace sabi nga po sa philippians 4:6 to 7 do not be anxious about anything but in every situation sa lahat daw po ng bagay sa lahat ng pagkakataon by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to god and the peace of god which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your minds in christ jesus so know this by heart especially when you are feeling anxious especially kapag maraming bumabagabag sa kaisipan mo sabi ng panginoon do not be anxious <laughs> pray and thank god present kung ano man yung nais mo na gawin ng panginoon sa buhay mo Okay, so yan po ang salita ng Panginoon, the power of His Word that transforms us. And it says here, the peace of God which transcends all understanding. Miski hindi mo pa nauunawaan yung mga bagay na nangyayari sa'yo. The peace of God will cover you. It will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So again, let me remind you, you were made to try. Rise up, humangon ka. Okay, wag mong hayaan na malubog ka dyan sa mga nangyayari sa paligid mo. Because God wants you to thrive not just survive you were made to thrive and i will end with psalm 1 2 to 3 and i hope that you also meditate on this word no sabi niya sa kanyang salita but his delight is in the law of the lord and on his law he meditates day and night he is like a tree planted by streams of water that yield its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither in all that he does he prospers And ano po yung streams of water na yan? And as you can see in the picture, yan po yung nagbibigay ng buhay sa atin pong buhay. The streams of water is the word of God that refreshes us, that nourishes us, that empowers us, that lifts us up, that comforts us. So we should be always on that stream of water. And sabi ng Panginoon, when you are on the stream of water, when you are in the word of God, you will yield your fruit in its season and your leaf will not wither and this is his promise all that he does all that you do will prosper and i hope that as we go through this life that we are living right now you are encouraged you are empowered by the word of god meditate on it day and night and all that you do will prosper in jesus name everybody say Amen and amen. Well, yan po yung salita ng Panginoon. And let me just end up in prayer. Lord, we praise you and we thank you, Lord God, for the reading of your word. Salamat po, Panginoon, that your word always encourages us, Panginoon. No matter kung ano man yung pinagdadaanan namin sa aming buhay, Lord, thank you for reminding us that we were made to thrive. And even you said in your word that you have come to give us life and have abundance oh lord god 
And Lord, we declare that in our life. We declare that we already have the victory because of what Jesus did back there at the cross. And thank you, Lord God, for reminding us once again that as Jesus is, so are we in this world, oh Lord God. We praise you and we thank you. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, so I hope that you do and get encouraged by the reading of the word. And at this time, kung meron po kayong mga bagay na gusto pong i-share, ipagpasalamat, or ipanalangin sa ating pong Panginoon, so this is the time na pwede po kayong mag-unmute at mapakinggan po namin ang inyong mga uh, pasasalamat at panalangin. All right, so marami pong salamat. Okay. Iyon pala. Uh, i-type ni <laughs> ni Hesed give me this mountain ngayon ko lang nabasa yung chat thank you Hesed <laughs> nako napakagandang libro po basahin niyo po no? so anyway uh, let's unmute kung sino man po ang uh, mga naandito and uh, pakinggan po natin kung ano po ang inyong mga saloobin uh, simulan po natin kila sino ba naandito teka nawala si ito sila Ate Lenny teka sandali ha hello Ate Lenny magandang araw sa inyo So, Luisto muna ako ngayon. At, uh... <laughs> Hello! Hello po! Hello! Gandang ka po. Hello! Hello! Kumusta kayo dyan? Abuti naman po. Uh, meron ba kayo magpasalamat or ipanalangin bago tayo magtapos? Uh, Today po is... Ito po. Ang cute. <laughs> Assuming cute. Yo, <laughs> ito. Um, Pastor, magandang hapon po. Salamat po sa mensaheng ngayon kay Pastor Rico. Salamat sa